welcome everyone to our Rapid Fire Wednesdays Q&A for Corporate Immigration Professionals. I'm Kimberly Best Robito, a partner in San Diego, and I'm joined by Mickey Matrician, the co-managing partner of WR Immigration's Boston office. Hi, Mickey. How are you doing today? Good. Hey, Kim. How are you? Good. So this time of year, we receive a lot of questions about STEM OPT extensions, specifically many foreign national employees that received a STEM degree, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, uh, from a U.S. university or college are wrapping up their initial 12-month optional practical training, or a lot of times we just call it the OPT. So they're tending to finish that up around June or July, just depending on their graduation date. And for those individuals with a STEM degree from a U.S. university or college, they may be eligible for up to an additional 24 months of optional practical training. And this is especially important if the STEM OPT individual, we'll call them a STEM OPT person, was not selected in the H-1B CAP registration that we just had this past March. So some larger employers might be very familiar with the STEM OPT extension program, but there are many small and medium-sized companies that may be introduced to the STEM OPT extension program just now, right, as the issue is coming up. So while many foreign students don't necessarily consider STEM OPT extension as requiring sponsorship by an employer, it is a type of immigration sponsorship given the direct involvement by a company as well as the compliance requirements. So with all that being said, our big lead up into what, it, what is STEM OPT, Mickey, when HR professionals inquire with you about helping an employee obtain a STEM OPT extension, can you explain a little bit about what they need to know before they jump in and say, yes, I'll do it? Yeah. So what I tell HR people is that, you know, in addition to the foreign employee having a STEM degree that the employer also has to be enrolled in the E-Verify program. Those are some questions, you know, that I receive lately from HR professionals at smaller or mid-sized companies that aren't really enrolled in E-Verify, and that's the first threshold question. You know, there's some pros and cons with enrolling in E-Verify, especially given that it's a federal government program, right? And it's important that the pros and cons are discussed with HR so that they have all the information they need before enrolling in the program itself. It's not just something that can be done overnight on a quick decision. It should really be a comprehensive analysis and thought process. Right. And I, I agree 100%, right? E-Verify is definitely one of the biggest factors for a company to consider, especially because it impacts our I-9 program going forward, as well as potentially other business operations. So what else should HR professionals know about the STEM OPT extensions in addition to the E-Verify requirement? For STEM extensions, we guide HR through the completion and submission of a formalized training plan. And that training plan is submitted to the designated student officer, the DSO at the university or college that this person graduated from. And the school's DSO has to approve that program before they can issue what's called the Form I-20, which has this designation that they're approving it for the STEM extension application to be filed with USCIS for the actual work permit, the EAD. And so the employee and the company have to work together to develop this plan in order to show that there's this connection between the employee's learning that they did in school with the learning opportunity or the practical training opportunity with the employer. So when you're talking with HR professionals and explaining that, yes, STEM OPT extension does require a certain level of sponsorship by the employer, my understanding is that it also imposes several additional requirements on, on companies that HR professionals might not necessarily know about when they you know, embark on this for the first time. So Mickey, specifically, what attestations or agreements is an employer making when they sign the training plan in order to undergo this MOPT extension? Yeah, I love that you bring that up because there definitely needs to be clarity about what is HR signing on to? What are they attesting to before they go ahead and sign off on these training programs? One of the attestations is that you know employer has to certify that it has you know sufficient, experienced, and knowledgeable personnel that will oversee and execute that training program. 
The employer also has to say that you know the employee is going to receive compensation that is commensurate with similarly situated workers. And then further, the employer has to certify that it's not going to displace U.S. workers by virtue of employing this foreign person. Then the other thing that they have to certify is that they're going to notify the school anytime there's a material change to the training plan. So like change in job duties or change in work location. Those are some examples. And there's more. (laughs) One more requirement is the student evaluation that's completed by the student and their manager halfway through the STEM OPT and then again at the end. So those are required evaluations that have to happen and essentially report it to the school's DSO. That's a lot for an employer to undertake potentially, right? And it's something to definitely talk with HR professionals about because it seems like it's, oh, just light off on this piece of paper, but there's a lot more that goes behind it. And as you mentioned, there's even more, right, with this MOPT extensions. So this program is overseen by U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, so ICE. And with that, with this being overseen by ICE, is there anything else that is special about STEM OPT in comparison to the regular OPT that you discuss with HR professionals, either before they initiate their very first STEM OPT extension or even at their 100th STEM OPT extension? Yeah, so it's all about compliance that we are always advising HR professionals about with the STEM OPT. And part of this is that STEM OPT is subject to site visits by ICE. And they want to make sure that the company is complying with all of those rules that I just mentioned. And so, you know, for the most part, unless it's driven by a complaint, ICE is required to give an employer 48 hours notice, which is good. It's really important to be prepared ahead of time because 48 hours is never enough, you know, to consult with your attorney and to prepare the site visit. So it's really important to be prepared for these site visits well in advance, you know, throughout the person's STEM period, going all the way back to when you're initially signing off on that original training plan. So you can't underscore enough for HR professionals the importance of making sure that all the T's are crossed and I's are dotted in terms of compliance. So Kimberly, I'm going to turn the table to you (laughs) and ask you a question. So speaking of compliance, this is your expertise. Are there any I know considerations that you talk about with HR professionals with respect to the STEM OPT extension. Yeah, so I know compliance is definitely my favorite topic, and I love to discuss this with you know with companies and ensure that they're keeping everything in order. So typically, the STEM OPT EAD card is not issued before the OPT EAD card has expired, right? So there might be a period of time where there's a gap in the documentation that's required to verify an individual's work authorization. So when the foreign employee obtains the new Form I-20 with the STEM OPT authorization from the DSO, and then they submit their EAD card application to USCIS, they receive an automatic 180-day extension of their work authorization. So we've been talking with HR professionals about the 540 automatic extension of certain EAD cards, and that does not apply to STEM OPT extension. So just want everybody to be very clear that there's only a 180-day extension, which should be enough time to get the new EAD card, especially if you know we're getting to the end. There's premium processing that's available for that additional fee in order to get the card in time. So when there's the 180-day automatic extension, the employer should note the Form I-9 that the STEM OPT EAD card application has been filed, which gives an automatic 180-day extension. And then when the new EAD card is issued, there is a re-verification that's completed on the Form I-9 to re-verify that individual's continued work authorization. So for STEM OPT, there's kind of a, a double process that needs to be done for the Form I-9, and it can get a little bit confusing so we're always here to help guide, you know, companies through that process to make sure their I-9s are in order. You know, as we're getting to the end here, Mickey, there is definitely a lot to think about with this MOPT extension. However, it can be a really important and beneficial part of a company's recruitment and retention plan, as we've seen. 
I'm sure you've seen it as well with some of your large companies and even the really small companies, right? Maintaining that one that one individual who's just super knowledgeable can make all the difference in the world. So thanks for talking through this with us today. I really appreciate it. Thanks, yeah, really. If you have any questions, please post a comment or send us a direct message. And if you don't already, please follow us on our LinkedIn page for WR Immigration, as well as on our individual LinkedIn's. And thank you, everyone. Thanks, Mickey. Thanks, Kimberly. 